friends and welcome to the secret podcast at service of change where we challenge reality question at which we've been taught and hope to inspire a new direction of thought to bring about change i'm your host dennis nappy the second with service of change at serviceofchange.com where you can read my book i am human and we are not who we think we are for free by subscribing to the secret newsletter where you'll get Weekly updates on our newest episodes of The Seeker Podcast, and you'll also receive exclusive content directly from me. And it's a great place to uh, share your thoughts and feedback uh, and correspond with me directly because I, you know, I've been getting some great feedback from listeners that I want to talk about a little bit later in the show. I've got some, some pretty good stories that I want to share, and I'm so thankful for that. But that right now, there is a lot going on this week. Uh, we have the standoff in Oregon with the militia. We have Obama putting out uh, an executive order regarding gun control, uh, you know, and, and a lot of um, bickering back and forth among the public. Uh, and what I would like to say is take a step back and focus and, and figure out, uh, you know, your appropriate plan and course of action where you stand. Don't get caught up in this drama because that's the idea. Put something out there, get you scared, get you worked up, divide us further. I want to talk about that for a minute. Uh, and like I said, I'm also going to talk about an, an experience that someone shared with me uh, with a, a real-life encounter with some people call it an incubus or a succubus or a shadow figure. Um, it's a pretty interesting story. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on this show. So let me jump right into it. Um, and uh, um, before I get to that, also another heads up, I'm going to be talking about uh, more possible DNA evidence of the Peruvian skulls. If you're familiar with those stories, I found an article talking about uh, some DNA testing was done recently that shows that as of right now, preliminary testings are showing that that skull may not be human. So what is it? What could it be? This is a fascinating uh, world we live in, very interesting times we're in right now. So as Fox Mulder says, the truth is out there and we aim to try to find it. So let's talk about this, this, um, standoff in Oregon right now. Um, I'm not going to go through all the facts and details. You can find that online on your own. Um, there, there's information everywhere. Social media is blowing up. But basically these guys, you know, in protest for uh, a couple ranchers burning, you know, controlled burn on their land um, were arrested. These guys decided to take up arms and occupy a federal building. Uh, now they're talking that the FBI may be planning a raid. This is from Infowars.com. They have somebody on the ground talking about the FBI might be planning to do a raid on the compound, but before they do the raid, they're going to be cutting off electricity, you know, all the standard stuff to make these guys uncomfortable and try to force them out or at least exhaust them before any, um, you know, violence is, is done. Um, what I want to focus on is this. The most common theme that I'm hearing with this issue is, well, if they were black or if they were Muslim, the government would be raiding this building. That may or may not be true, and but this is exactly what I've been talking about. I've been talking about this for two years on this show and on the ChangeCast, is that we are being divided, and that's the evidence of it right there. And, and if you have that, if you've made those statements, I respect your statements. Again, you may be right, and that is an issue, and it's frustrating. But we are still allowing people who are trying to have a voice we're still allowing them to be demonized. And in, our, in that demonization, we're separating ourselves from them. 
And, and, and maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe we don't agree with their cause. Maybe these guys really are doing something dumb and, and causing a problem. But my point is this, we, you know, with the, I saw it with the, with the Black Lives Matter protests. People were saying, oh, look at them. They're idiots. They shouldn't be doing that. They're causing all this trouble. They're taking to the streets. What is their reason? What is their cause? They're upset because people are dying. They want a better way. Now, we can critique that movement. We can critique every movement because there's always room for improvement. There's always, you know, you, you always have 20-20 hindsight on ways to handle it better. So instead of just demonizing someone because they had the courage or the frustration to say enough and stand up, instead of demonizing them and saying, well, if this, then that never would have happened. They'd be in a lot more trouble. Instead of doing that, understand their cause. And you may find out, well, that's very similar to how I feel. So now instead of criticizing and, and separating ourselves further, because if you study the conspiracy theories, they all, all talk about it, divide and conquer, and it's through the media. Whether the media is giving it attention or not giving it attention, we're still fighting amongst ourselves. They say it in the Hunger Games, remember who the real enemy is. But at the end of the day, I sometimes tend to think that it's us because we are allowing ourselves to be misled and divided. Take a step back, look at people's causes and ask yourself, what is the best way to handle this? I don't, I don't think that violence is the way to handle it. I really don't. I think that a lot of things can be handled through simple boycotting of services or getting involved more in your own communities. Now, in this situation, I, again, I, I don't want to get into the specifics of it just because I, the whole show is not about that. But take a step back you know, and ask yourself, based on this rhetoric, is this dividing me or is this better uniting me and helping me find a common goal to solve the problem? Okay, so the next uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, is the gun control issue and just because it's a big deal right now. Um, you know, Obama put out an executive order and he's making, you know, background checks more strict for people to get firearms. There's talk of an assault weapon ban. I don't think that was in his thing, um, you know. But it, you know these are scary times that we're living in. I, you know I go back and forth on this on this issue because at the, there's a lot of talk out there of well they want to take all our guns away. You know at the same time should anybody just any average person have a gun? Well sometimes I feel like well we're Americans we should have that right. But then I go back and say but there are some people that you know I'm saying this as a former cop there are people that just shouldn't have a gun. So where do we draw the line? Should that be the responsibility of individual communities of, of uh, you know, or of law enforcement and the federal government. I mean, you know, we got to ask ourselves, how much control do we want? How much of our liberties are we willing to trade for safety and security? And I think that's a very dangerous road to go down. You know, it's a very cautious road to go down, but something needs to be done. At the same time, you know, if everybody carried a gun, then would we have as much gun violence? You could look, make the argument, well, maybe, you know, it could become the Wild West and everybody could just be dueling, you know, but then, it, but would that change mass shootings? Well, I think it would. I think if everybody was armed, a responsibly armed citizen, not just let me get a gun, I don't know how to use it. I mean, you need to have extensive training. But if we had responsibly armed citizens, I don't think we'd have any more mass shootings. Or if we did, they, instead of killing 15, 20, 30 people, maybe one person, the two people would get shot and then the gunman would be taken down because everybody's got a gun. So um, I disagree with by taking guns off the street, you're going to stop mass shootings because I think that if, if we have responsibly armed citizens, we're, you know, we're going to have less incidents of the mass shootings happening. Um, but again, it's a slippery slope. Just wanted to bring it up because I know it's an important in the, uh, you know, in the media, in our lives right now, something to think about. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that, you know, and what, what we what we should be doing. Okay, let me move on to that. I want to talk about these Peruvian skulls because this is a really interesting story here. And again, I got this from unknowncountry.com. Um, you know, I reference their website pretty regularly. This is Whitley Strieber's website. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll talk about him, you know, a little bit after this. Um, I review this article just because I have a lot of respect for what he's done over the years. 
Uh, but this article is called DNA Tests on Ancient Peruvian Skulls Suggest They Are Not Human. I'll have links to this on the uh, serviceofchange.com show notes for this secret podcast episode. But it's, it's uh, dated Sunday, January 3rd, 2016. Recent DNA testing has been conducted on a set of ancient elongated Peruvian skulls that have baffled researchers for decades due to their unusual shape and size. While the DNA testing is not complete, the results seem to indicate that the individuals they originally belonged to were not human. First excavated by Peruvian archaeologist Julio Teo in 1928, the Paracas skulls were found in extensive necropolis under Peru's uh, Paracas Desert and are believed to be around 3,000 years old. The skulls have perplexed researchers ever since their discovery. While they appear to be the product of ordinary artificial cranial deformation, the Paracas skulls are 25% larger and 60% heavier than an ordinary human skull. Cranial deformation, a practice still carried out today in some cultures, can only change the shape of the skull and cannot increase its volume, as is the case with the Paracas skulls. Okay, my aside here, they're different. You know, it, it, they're saying here that although they have changed the shape of the skull, the human skulls aren't that big. So these are uh, anatomically different than a human skull, as it, a modern human skull as it stands already. Okay, the article continues, the DNA testing was conducted by an anonymous laboratory with the preliminary results having been announced by the Paracas Museum of History's director, Brian Forrester. Tissue samples were taken from the skull's hair, skin, teeth, and cranial bones. It had mitochondrial DNA with mutations unknown in any human, primate, or animal known so far. But a few fragments I was able to sequence from this sample indicated that if these mutations will hold, we are dealing with a new human-like creature very distant from Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denis, excuse, excuse me, Denisovans, reports Forrester. According to reports, the individuals from the Paracas skulls were so biologically different that it would have been impossible for humans and them to interbreed. I am not sure if it will even fit into the known evolutionary tree. While there is a great deal of speculation circulating on the internet about that these results mean that the skulls are extraterrestrial in origin, caution must be exercised in this regard as there is no way to currently ascertain whether or not these individuals or their ancestors originated from off-planet. The, these results simply mean their DNA does not match one for, from known humans and may be a genetic offshoot that existed in parallel with modern humans. These results all, are also preliminary and Forrester hopes to raise the funds to have a full genome of these skulls sequence in the future. Again, this is from unknowncountry.com. You can get the link to it at serviceofchange.com in the show notes for this podcast. But this article says so much in such a short amount of space. Uh, one thing I want to add, you know, I, I've come across some information that some of these skulls uh, are different from the human skulls in that they have less plates. And I, I forget, I think the human skull has three plates in it. I could be wrong, might be four. I'm pretty, no, it's three, left, right, and the back. And I think this, these skulls, or another set of skulls that they found, only has two plates in it. So there are structural differences in the, in the, the makeup of these skulls besides just the DNA. Uh, and I want to draw our attention also how they're saying this may not even fit into our current evolutionary tree. This is a new species. Now, I know a lot of us out there want to jump and say they're aliens. They're definitely aliens. But we don't have any proof that they come from another planet. And we need to be cautious with that as truth seekers. We need to think about this for a minute. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. And I've said this since, and I, I was a huge fan of the show, Ancient Aliens. And I still am. I, I respect it a lot because it got people talking about it. But when something becomes so mainstream like that, as a, as a former counterintelligence agent, my first thought is, they want me to look here, where don't they want me to look? So everybody's saying, aliens, 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 they came from the sky. So, you know, let's take a step back and say, where else can I look? Because they want me to look to the right, well, I'm immediately going to look to the left. What if there's an ancient society that was here, that's, that's Earth-based, ancient society. Now, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that. Maybe these are remnants of that. I'm currently reading Graham Hancock's book, Magicians of the Gods. Wow, uh, is all I can say. You know, the beginning of the book, he makes the argument that a large cataclysm pretty much destroyed the earth 12,800 years ago. And he does an excellent job of breaking down the science and the argument, presenting both sides of it, but ultimately, in my opinion, saying, hey, this happened. And now where I'm at in the book, he's starting to show the evidence 
that, hey, there was not just human life, but a, a pretty sophisticated culture. And I'm, I'm very early into that part, but that's where it seems like he's going with that. And I've read other, you know, heard him talk about other things and stuff. I, I think that's where he's going with it. And that's, that's my opinion is that there was an advanced human culture here on earth. What does that say to us? This may be evidence of that. That changes everything we know about who we are. And it changes, in my opinion, about where we may be going. And we need to understand that as well. It's very, very important. Uh, you know, and he, I just read, and I'll do a whole show on this. I'm not going to get into it now, but fascinating stuff. Pick it up, Magicians of the Gods. It's, it's well worth your time. And I'm not even halfway through the book yet, but I'm just fascinated by everything that Graham Hancock is saying and the work that he does. So I'm uh, running out of time here. I might go over a little bit, but I want to move on past this story and talk a little bit about um, an encounter that, first of all, thank you to my readers and listeners. Uh, I've gotten some some really nice emails this week from people that have read I Am Human and We're Not Who We Think We Are, uh, to people that just listen to the show, or even people on the uh, the social media feeds through Goodreads, through Facebook. Uh, you know, thank you. I, I love having dialogue. I love you know, uh, getting your feedback on things, it, you know, it, it's what keeps me going and doing this show, uh, and writing my articles and my books, um, because it really, we're in this together and I'm, I'm happy to have one small voice among many and, and just means a lot to be acknowledged and, and respected by those of you out there who've taken the time to reach out. So thank you so much for, um, you know, for your interest and for sharing your thoughts on some of these things with me. So uh, a reader slash listener reached out to me, uh, yesterday actually, uh, about a, a story and, you know, I'm going to change the identity of this person, obviously, and, and the gender or whatever could be male, could be female. I'm going to refer to her as female. Um, but she had an experience with what she referred to as an incubus. <clears throat> now, um, you know, this really catches my attention because part of my research and part of my books talk about these figures that come in the night that stand over us that, you know, that I suggest among other people suggest that they're feeding off of our negative emotional output. Um, so she said that she woke up and there was this small creature. She was in that in-between state. I don't want to say she was wide awake, but she was conscious, you know, in between asleep and awake. So she's aware that, you know, what's going on. She's aware that she's in her bed and she felt this creature. She said it almost looked like a tiny little horse was on her chest trying to get at her. She said she it, it, she felt that it wasn't able to do what it wanted to do. She said so she she fought she fought she fought, got it off of her, and she said you know she was able to look around the room still in this dream like state you know and, and I talk about the works of Monroe uh, with the out of body state so you know I suspect that's where she was she was separating from her body in this other state of consciousness, and she looked over and she saw what she described was. Uh, she said it definitely felt female. It had orange skin and it was like a little troll-like creature. She said, and the troll had a, a rope or a leash attached to this other creature that had just been on top of her trying to take something from her. Uh, and, you know, she got the impression that, that this, this woman had defeated this creature from whatever it was trying to to do. It almost sounds like something out of uh, a couple of the Stephen King books that I've read. Um, you know, one of them being uh, Insomnia that talks all about auras and energy and sucking the energy out of people. Um, but, you know, I've heard countless experiences. I've had similar experiences. I've never had one creature controlling another with a leash. But that, to me, really, I think, is interesting. Um, you know, that, that, that she had this vivid encounter with this. And, uh, you know, my point is, number one, thank you for having the courage to share that. I think we need to be more outspoken about these experiences because, you know, uh, as Morpheus says, what is real? It's electrical impulses sent to your brain that give you the perception that, you know, and I'm butchering the quote, but, you know, we don't know what reality is right now. But what I am confident in is that it's more than just these nuts and bolts of the physical world that we can see, hear, taste, and touch. There is something more to it out there, and we are not alone once we start exploring it. And there are a lot of pioneers out there who have and, and continue to explore and encounter other things that may not, may not be acknowledged in the schoolhouse, may not be acknowledged by the mainstream, but I, I believe that they are real. I've, I've encountered them myself, 
and I'm not ashamed to admit it anymore. Um, so please, uh, I'd love to hear your stories. And, and this is where I like to, do, you know, do the tie back to uh, to Whitley Strieber when he wrote his book Communion. You know, he um, he received thousands and thousands of letters of people saying yes. I have experienced this, and it, it became known as the alien abduction phenomenon. What I love about Strieber is that he still says, I don't know that they're alien. He says, I, this could be a part of the human condition for all that I know. Uh, they could be us in the future, you know, uh, and some of these alien abduction stories mirror some of these types of encounters that, that we just talked, that I just talked about, you know, so uh, I, I admire the work that he's done. Um, he's inspired me to, to do this show, to do some of my writing, to, you know, to, to tell my story, um, so, you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm helping to, uh, to carry on his, his movement. Uh, when somebody writes to me, uh, that means a lot to me. Um, you know, and I just kind of want to give my tribute to, to Mr. Streber and the work that he's done, him and his wife, Ann Streber, um, you know, who recently passed, unfortunately, but they've done so much, uh, fantastic work for this, for this community, for this Understanding, and he was alone when he did it. Nobody, you know, nobody believed him at first, but then he started getting these letters, you know. So when I get one or two letters or emails uh, from somebody saying, "Here was my experience, and here's what happened," I, I, I'm just so thankful and appreciative of it. So if you have a thought or an experience or an encounter, number one, you know, if you're a subscriber to the to the free newsletter, just hit the reply button and, and send me an email and tell me about it. It's Dennis Nappy I I N A P P I I I at gmail dot com. I'd love to hear it. If you want it read on the air, I'd love to read it on the air and share it so other people out there understand. I'm not alone. This this weird stuff is happening. This scary stuff is happening to me, and, and I'm not alone. And I'm not crazy. I want to tell you. I want to be another voice saying you are not crazy, or at least you're not alone. If we're all going crazy together, but I don't think that we're crazy. And also, the, I believe that there's things that we can do to either minimize or prevent these experiences from happening. And a big part of that defense is through meditation and strengthening your understanding of consciousness and your ability to control yourself in these altered states. Uh, I'm a firm believer in that. I've had success because I meditate when I've encountered these beings, you know, in more recent years, um, you know, in, in dealing with it. I'm at the point now where I, I, I don't even think they come around anymore. Now, knock on wood, watch them show up tonight and I'll have a, the worst experience ever. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, but there's something we can do about it. And if they are feeding off of us, then my goal is to starve them out. And, uh, you know, I'll talk about that in my books. So again, thank you for reaching out. Many ways to connect. Uh, you know, we're on iTunes, we're on SoundCloud. Um, you know, a lot of links on the Facebook feeds, you know, uh, it's, it's, um, facebook.com slash truth seeker, T R U T H S E I K E R. And I always say it's spelled differently intentionally because I wanted to do truth seekers spelled the right way. And somebody else already had that group when I started back in 2005 on Yahoo. <clears throat> so I just spelled it differently because I, I like the name and I think it's kind of unique. So, uh, but again, find us on SoundCloud, find me on, uh, on iTunes, service to change.com slash I am human. You can read the book. I am human. We're not who we think we are for free. Highly recommend it. I've been getting great feedback. A lot of people, like I said, the most common thing is, oh my gosh, I've had those thoughts. I've had those experiences. I know I'm on the right track. I'm really excited about the work I'm doing for Food for the Archons, the next book. The, the pieces are just falling into place for me as I'm writing this book. It's pretty much writing itself. So I can't wait to release that. And, and uh, you know, for my subscribers, uh, you know, hopefully soon I'll have some, uh, you know, some early previews coming to you for you to review and comment on. That would mean the world to me. So Okay, I think I've talked enough today, uh, you know, and, and going on, giving enough plugs and stuff. But please uh, check me out and let me know your thoughts and look for, uh, a, a, you know, listener, reader, subscriber feedback link on the serviceofchange.com. I'll try to put that up, hopefully before this show even airs. So you can just go to servicechange.com, click on it, and just in the comment box, say whatever you want, and I'll be happy to read it on the air. Or if you want it off air, I'll have an, an option for that too, so we can just communicate that way. All right, that's all the time I have. Again, I'm Dennis Nappy the second. This is The Secret Podcast with Service of Change at serviceofchange.com, where small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you to be that change. Never stop questioning and keep an open mind. Thank you. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not
Welcome to Truth Seekers. (laughs) 